you're there in New York, the Rutgers situation. Yeah, that's unbelievable too, man. I I actually been in the at the Big East tournament the last few years and been lucky enough to um, you know sit uh, right on the floor there. And I and I I've, I've kind of noticed Coach Rice. I mean, he's he's I mean, he's not throwing balls at guys <laughs> during the Big East tournament. Yeah, but he's just as crazy in in game situation. I right. mean, he gets he would get absolutely like mad. And, um, so, you know, that seeing that video, it really doesn't come as such a huge surprise because if you're, if you're right around the bench and you see how he deals with these guys and, um, you know, look, you can't, you can't do what he did with these kids. You can't kick a kid. You can't hit a kid. You know, you can't laser beam, these basketballs at these kids, you know, I understand maybe in a weird sort of way, he thinks he's trying to, you know, motivate them and, and help them, um, you know, achieve something higher than maybe what they thought they could. Yeah. But there's a, there's a way to go about it and there's a way not to go about it. And, um, you know, unfortunately the guy lost his job over that and who knows if he's going to get back on the wheel after this. I think it's, you know, he's, probably going to have to go somewhere small if he wants to, um, you know, coach again. And who knows if he'll even get that opportunity. So it's it's really sad. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel it serves as a, a warning to any other coaches who are practicing uh, similar ways? Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, you, you, you have to be, especially in today's day and age, I mean, wh- whatever you do, it's going to get out there. You know, I mean, so – you know, you have to obviously be mindful of that, but there's, there's a, you know, as I said, there's a right and a wrong way to deal with kids. And personally, my style and, and I'm in the gym all the time with kids and, and, you know, training them and, and also dealing with them as, as sort of an advisory level. Yeah. Um, my approach is, and I feel what, what works best with these kids, treat them like adults. They're young adults. Treat them you know, with the same respect that you would want to be treated. And you know what? They're going to listen. That's right. Uh, they're going to be motivated. If, if you, if you, um, handle things a certain way. So I know back in the day, you know, you got Bobby Knight, you know, a handful of other guys, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, they would do whatever they felt like they, they, you know, wanted to do. And you can't do that anymore. And it's, and frankly, it doesn't work. So, um, um, you know, I think a guy like Bobby Knight probably got away with some stuff because he won and, uh, you know, obviously it's a big business and, you know, when teams are winning and making money, you can maybe overlook some things, but, um, yeah, to me, I mean, coaches, it it is a, 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 you know, glaring example of what not to do and, if there are coaches out there that are still, you know, operating that way, then then they better change what they're doing real quick. Yeah, I I, I would think there was that old mindset is if you want your players to be tough, you have to be tough on them. But you've you've said it. You don't have to um, do that and be that way to have good players and create better people. Be a leader. Lead by example. Um, you know. Uh, develop a tr- a real trust if your players know that you that they can trust you and that you will defend them then then you know they will run through a brick wall for you and and when you ask them to do it they will do it but i mean especially a lot of these kids you know ki- where they're coming from they're already tough yeah they're already tough i mean you you grow up in some of these spots especially around here these kids coming out of the Bronx and Brooklyn and, in in you know, in Manhattan and, and, uh, you know, all, all around this area, trust me. And then, and there's a, that's not to say there's aren't other tough areas, you know, in, in, in LA and all over the country for that matter. But for the most part, these kids, they're tough already, you know, I mean, they're coming out of situations, um, you know, they've already been through so many experiences off the basketball court yeah. that, 
You just don't need that type of stuff. A lot has gone on in this, you know, situation at Rutgers, and we could go uh, talk about the actual situation itself and what happened and who's responsible. But uh, you've uh, emailed out a, a document, and I think it's really good because it's really looking at, hey, look, think about this and. Uh, these are the guidelines you need to go by. Tell me more about uh, the the idea behind this document. Well, the idea is, you know, coaching around the world, I have seen various various ways and methods that uh, people have coached. And even as I grew up, uh, there was a certain style of coaching. And there's, there's just a difference between crossing the line and getting players to, to get – to achieve, to drive them, to motivate them, to accomplish. But uh, but once you've crossed the line and you've and you've gone into uh, uh, some racial tones or or sexuality, um, the message is lost, and it's it's counterproductive. And in that particular situation at Rutgers, those athletes, he he must have had some sort of respect. At some point for them, is I can I can only imagine that they saved his job uh, during that time period. Yeah. Uh, because I, I I don't imagine uh, that uh, and many athletes anywhere else would have tolerated that and and would not have had a confrontation a direct confrontation with him. Yeah. Um, but in my in my email that I sent out to uh, coaches around the world it was about it's about that methodology you know you are a teacher and what in, what methods are you going to go about by teaching you know, the stick or or the carrot mm. there are times to use there are times to use both to get to get your point across but um, you know when things just aren't going right, and you keep on, uh, you, it's up to the it's up to the coach to decide what what has gone on. What is because it's they're under your supervision. You are a teacher, and you then therefore have to look internally and find out another another method to get to get that athlete motivated yep. to achieve. Uh, but I. It does not come from uh, degrading somebody. It, it, it doesn't work. Right. And um, and thus, therefore, you know, even more so, this was all on tape and, and recorded. And now, as a consequence, the fallout has been tremendous because now some people are saying are, are up in arms in different places at different universities. Yeah. Um, and they're being, they're being looked at. They're being scrutinized. And... You know, there's there's tremendous pressure to win. You know, there really is. There's yeah. tremendous pressure to win, and uh, the stress level gets to them. And uh, so that's that's what that's what happens. You know, and and I, it's unfortunate situation. It came to light, and everybody at Rutgers had to pay the price for that. Yeah. Yeah, and it seems. I mean, can you imagine? You know, if you're you're a, you're you can you imagine sending your your son or your daughter to an institution to be um, of an institution of higher learning to to learn and to have role models and yeah. to to be guided and uh, when you see that that is not how you wanted them to be to be guided uh, maybe in some sense you know I'm all for uh, driving driving my son. I'm all for pushing him, I'm all, but it, it has to come from a position of love and understanding and teaching. And then I, you know, but once, once you've crossed the line and uh, there's no going back, it's yeah. just it's too hard to get, regain that respect one more time. Yeah, definitely. That's a situation that um, went way out of control. And um, other coaches definitely need to uh, observe that and what's going on, and, and make sure that they're 
uh, what can you say, uh, practicing the, the correct way? There is a way to drive your athletes. They need to know that they have to be pushed. They have to be ready to perform that day. And and when they are not, they need to be to be challenged by uh, various various techniques. But if it's going downhill, there's a point of diminishing returns. It's not like it gets any better. Yeah. It some some days an athlete can only give you sixty percent. You only want all that sixty percent that day. But you know to to throw a ball at a at a at a kid. Uh, to kick them and to 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 degrade them is not going to necessarily is not going to work. It's not. It's crossed the line. It is no longer teaching. Yeah. It is a. It is. It is. And and that's why everyone had to pay the price. The athletic director allowed it to happen. Wanted to do some counseling, and uh, no way. That's behavior that's not toler- tolerated yeah. and as a consequence everybody has uh, taken the fall yeah and they all should you do not want that in your classrooms you would not allow it in the classrooms and the basketball court is an extension of the classroom yeah yeah well uh, for any parent if they were to be aware that their child was being treated that way they would not be happy one bit whatsoever no, not one bit. And it doesn't matter that the child is six foot nine. He is still you're using basketball as a tool to get an education. That's not the education that you kinda of want to have them be given. Yeah. So you can you can you can push a ch- you can push a child to perform on the basketball court, to do some things much better. Sometimes that you even get a better response when you say, you know, uh, Johnny, that that wasn't good enough. You know, I know you can do a lot better than that. Yeah. Because they're they're internally driven as well. But if not, there's no coach Wooden used to say there's no greater teacher than the bench. Mm. And you sit them down, and someone else takes over. The message becomes clear. He also told me that. You cannot, you know, uh, when things go wrong and you just kick everyone out of the gym, you take away the privilege of playing the game. The message becomes loud and clear. And I've done that a few times in my coaching career, and it has paid tremendous dividends because instead of flipping out and yelling and screaming, you simply just said, you know what, we don't have it today. Now, it takes a lot of guts as a coach to do that, yeah. but it, it – it does pay dividends. It sends a message, and then you know, from a man, and sometimes can even save a coach um, the meltdown. But it's the uh, there's a diminishing return. There's a reason why the NCAA has a 20-hour rule of, of of how much time they could be on the court. Yeah. Because some coaches would stay out there for six or seven hours. Yeah. And. And we would have probably more of this, maybe these types of situations, because the pressure to win, and uh, the, the the change of focus needs to be on the method of which and how we teach those athletes. How are you getting them prepared? How are you motivating them? And uh, and hopefully that will that will be lessons that we're that we're that we're teaching from this point forth. Yeah, you said um, uh, to self scout and evaluate your approach by reviewing your practice video with a critical eye, just like you would with your team. Now, I think that says it all right there. Without without a question, we when I was coaching in the Pac-10, we had video of everything, and you need uh, every practice was was video, and we needed to go. You need to go back and you need to look and observe your behavior on the floor. Are you active? Are you providing instruction? What What's happening out there? 
And uh, if we can all do that and internally look, and I think now the um, – going to find hard press to find any coach not not really doing that anymore they're going to do some self observing uh, take some self observation and say you know listen I maybe my own methodology isn't right you know and I'm I'm losing it and uh and we all do because the stress and the hours and the time and and they get on the floor and but you know as I stated things some things aren't going to go right you need to cut cut it and be done